When you th- th- what do you think is the number one ploy that Satan uses to co-opt people from God's cause to his cause, but yet use them in the church? The number one ploy, I think the number one ploy is replacing the truth about God's law of love, design law, with an imperialistic law construct. So you can be very religious, but very intolerant. Because the rules must be enforced. I was at a town hall meeting a few weeks ago in Atlanta where we were discussing the uh, ACA. Isn't that what it was, the ACA, right? Yeah. Obamacare. Okay, for others. One of the panelists on the... On the uh, panel argued that the government should do a massive redistribution of wealth, taking wealth from the wealthy and giving it to those uh, so that all can have equity of health care. And they were very passionate. Got applause from the audience at this. I made some comments, and I've thought about it more since then, and I, and I made comments to this effect, that there are two general ways you can redistribute wealth. One is through charitable giving. Those who have from love in their hearts, see the less fortunate, and actively choose to give of their means to bless those. This is what Jesus taught, what God taught, um, that, uh, that we should help those less fortunate with the resources and means that we have. And when we, when we redistribute wealth in this way, those who are the givers receive multifold blessing. They experience greater compassion. The more you give, the more you receive. Their characters are transformed. They grow in godliness and grace. The receivers, they actually, from the, in this model, they experience it as a gift, not as something that they have an entitlement to, not something that is their right. They're, thus, it engenders a sense of thankfulness in them, a sense of appreciation, and instills a desire for them to not all, always be in that role, to seek to improve themselves to the best of their abilities. This is what happens when we redistribute wealth from a sense of charitable giving. <laughs> However, there's also another way to redistribute wealth. And it's the way of the beast. All earthly governments in Please scripture. You used that term. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that came to me afterwards. <laughs> okay. But I did talk I did talk about the principles. I did talk about the principles. And I did talk about these ideas. But but all earthly governments in scripture are described by what? Symbolism. Beasts. Okay? That's how they're described. And it's by coercive force, taking from people who don't have it in their heart to share, uh, forcing them coercively with threats of various reprisals and punishments to give their resources to people that they, in their heart, are not ready to give their resources to. In this system, those who have their wealth taken are cheated. They're cheated of the privilege of the gift of giving. They're, pri- they're cheated from the, from the growth in character that would come ha- had they given it freely. The compassion in their hearts. Often resentment is then instilled in the heart. A feeling um, of being exploited and taken advantage of. Such actions plant seeds of discord and causes further division in society. Those on the receiving end of this redistribution, often rather than feeling appreciative and thankful, feel they're entitled. Feel that it's their right. uh, And they demand more and more and more. uh, And in fact, get angry and protest when more is not given. And it causes further division in society. We cannot, and and so the basic point I'm making here is, you can have a good cause and a good motive, like let's help the poor, let's help the less fortunate. But you can't win God's cause using Satan's methods. I don't suppose you got applause. applause Actually, there were quite a few who came up to me afterwards and told me that they really valued and appreciated my, my comments on many, many levels. No earthly government operates on God's system. They all operate. And I thought about this even more after I wrote these notes this morning. You know, communism, this ideal of let's all share together. But it's inherently coercive. It's not truly loving. uh, Socialism, same thing. Capitalism, capitalism is one of the most selfish things you can have. It is all about exploiting others to get ahead for yourself. There is no earthly government in any form that you can look out and find God's system. It's not there. They're all corruptible and all corrupted. That's why we advocate a separation of church and state. Because the church is supposed to operate on a different system, a different way of doing business. And then any time you start merging the church with the state, the church becomes corrupted with the earth's principles, the world's principles, and begins to try to do its charitable work, its good causes, with coercive tactics. Let's get the right judges in place. Let's get the right laws in place. We believe this is the wrong way to live. We believe this, blah, blah, blah. And so we're going to coercively force people to live to our standards. And the church becomes corrupted, not a bastion of light anymore. Let's take time out of employees' checks. Take tithes out of employees' checks. Yeah, there is a system that does that. 
you work for a certain organization, your tithe is automatically deducted for you. But we'll just let that for another day.